Hello everyone. Have you heard about quantum computing? Do you know that is there any such quantum computer in India? Have you ever wondered that how these quantum computers are functioning? What is the speed of them? If we compare it to our classical computers, what can be their speed? Is it some 100 times faster, 1000 times faster? What is its actual speed? And then, is there any such quantum computer in India? So let us see, in this session, in this lecture, we are going to discuss one chapter of our science and technology book, that is chapter 10. And in that, we are going to talk about a specific topic, quantum technology. I am Kinsuk Parasar and you can follow me on Telegram for daily quizzes and other related aspects of science and technology. Okay. So see, now we are going to delve into these questions. We are going to examine these questions that what exactly is quantum computing? What is the principle behind it? How it works? And then we will also going, we are also going to examine, is it really very fast? It is that much fast? Okay. And then we will look into some of the applications of it that where these quantum computers can be used, in which area we can have application of them. Then after, we are going to look into one more very important thing. Is there any such quantum computer in India or not? What is India's role or what is India's relation with this quantum computing? Are we having any schemes? Are we having any policy on it? Okay. So let us start our discussion. Let us see that what exactly is quantum computer. Now, on the right side, you might be seeing this image and this is what represents what we call as quantum computers. Okay. Now, if we talk about it, it is a machine which is performing, quant which is using the principles of quantum mechanics in order to solve the calculations or in order to look over the calculations, in order to perform complex calculations. Now, what is this uh, what is this principle what is this principle of this uh, quantum computer what is this principle like uh, what is this quantum thing which we are using here like in we know that when we talk about classical computers there we have operation like 0 and 1 they work in binary digit 0 and 1 but when we talk about the quantum computer they are not operating in 0 and 1 they are operating between 0 to 1. Okay. So that is a different thing and that's, this is what we call as quantum superposition. This is one of the very first principles of the quantum technology. Okay. In this case, we can see that the quantum system, they have this ability to occur in simultaneous state, sim multiple states simultaneously. Okay. So at one point of time, there can be multiple states of these quantum particles. So quantum computing use, using this very principle of quantum mechanics that we call as quantum superposition. In this image, you can see this is a representation. If we talk about, if we talk about the classical computers, they operate in 0 and 1. Okay. But if we talk about qubit, they have this ability to exist in multiple states simultaneously. They can exist between 0 to 1 at the same time. Okay. Now, there is one more thing. There is one more very remarkable principle in the use of quantum computers. Okay. And that is what we call as entanglement, quantum entanglement. So, what does this quantum entanglement mean? Okay. Basically, in quantum mechanics, it is said that if two qubits are there, and even if they are like uh, separated from each other by light years, then also they can be acting in such a manner that they are correlated. Okay. So, two particles which are even light years away from each other, they can behave as if they are correlated with each other. So, quantum computing is using the principles of quantum entanglement and quantum superposition in order to solve complex calculations and they are able to solve these complex calculations in fraction of time what the classical computer takes. Okay. Now, what is this fraction of time or what is its speed that we have discussed about? See, it has been said that 
the speed of the quantum computers can be as high as 158 million times. It can be as high as 158 million times in comparison to the most sophisticated supercomputers that we are having in the present times. So, it is that much faster. It is not 10 times, 100 times, 1000 times. It is 158 million times faster than that of the classical computer. Okay. Now, see, if we talk about the quantum computers, they can do some complex calculation within 4 minutes, which in normal case, our classical computers may take up to 10,000 years to accomplish. Okay. So, the supercomputers which may take 10,000 years to calculate or which may take 10,000 years to solve some complex problems, those complex problems can be solved within 4 minutes by the quantum computers. Now, on the right side of it, you can see a comparison and here is one thing which you must be understanding. See, when we talk about the simple calculations, here again, the dominance of classical computers would be there. If we talk about classical computers, then you can see that if in doing some simple calculation, it is taking 10 seconds of time, the quantum will take one minute. Similarly, if it is taking two minutes, the quantum will also be taking two minutes. But when we talk about, when we talk about larger problems, when we talk about the complex problems, suppose if a classical computer is taking 330 years to solve one single thing, now that can be done within 10 minutes by a normal quantum computers. At the same time, 3300 years, it can be done in 11 minutes. So, you can see the scale from 330 years to 3300 years. This is the limit which I was trying to show you. That if we talk about 330 years, it takes 10 minutes. It is taking 3300 years. For the quantum computers, it is taking 11 minutes. And what takes the age of universe? For the classical computers to solve, it can be solved by the quantum computers within 24 minutes. Okay. So, so the normal classical computers, the supercomputers, they might take the age of the entire universe means billions of years in doing these calculation, and the same calculation which is done by being by the supercomputers in billions of years can be done in 24 minutes by the quantum computers. So, when we talk about large scale problems, it can be done by the quantum computers in very limited amount of time. Okay. And that is its advantage. So, now see, just to give you a comparison of it, if we talk about the quantum computing, it calculates with qubits, which can represent any value between 0 and 1 at the same time. Okay. And then if we talk about the classical computer, they work with transistors which can represent either 0 or 1. Okay. So, they can represent either 0 or 1 and the qubits can represent 0 and 1 at the same time also. They can exist in multiple states at the same time. The quantum superposition. Okay. Then, power increases exponentially. Okay, if we are increasing the number of qubits, then the power is going to increase exponentially. Whereas, if we talk about the classical computers, here the power increases in linear fashion, one to one relationship. Okay. So, if we are increasing the number of transistors, its power is going to increase in a linear manner. Okay. Now, there is one more very important part. The quantum computers, they have high error rates and they need to be kept at ultra cold temperatures. They are highly sensitive. They have to be preserved at ultra cold temperatures and plus there is also chances of more error. But if we talk about the classical computers, they have low error rates and also at room temperature, they can function efficiently. Okay. 
so that is the advantage of the classical computers at this point of time okay then if we talk about the quantum computers here you can see that they are suited for tasks like data analysis simulations and etc big data and all but if we talk about the classical computers okay though most of our everyday activities most of our everyday activities is basically what can be easily done with the help of classical computers for example if you are watching this video on your laptops now for that you don't need to have a quantum computer you can simply watch it over even if you are doing some coding and all it can also be done easily on your laptops okay but when we talk about complex problems when we talk about the complex astronomical uh, predictions or simulations then at that point of time there is a need of quantum computer okay now if we talk about what is its application where it is being used okay so the first thing is it is being used in cryptography to encrypt the messages and at the same time to even decrypt the messages okay like the current cryptography which we are using using the classical methods it can be decrypted with the help of quantum technology in a very lesser period of time but if something is encrypted with quantum technology it is not easily crackable okay so this is the first thing it can be used for having a secure communication protocol okay so in the communication sector this quantum technology is going to play a very instrumental role in upcoming times especially if we talk about in the context of national security this is going to be a key thing here quantum sensors are also there basically quantum if we talk about the quantum one of the fundamental use of the quantum is in making very precise and ultra sensitive sensors so the quantum sensors they can be used for medical imaging they can be used for mineral exploration exploration environmental monitoring and so many other functions okay so they are highly precise even in border security they can be playing a very important role the the sensors which are there having the quant based on the quantum technology they are very much precise they are ultra sensitive okay then we have also quantum simulation now you know that we are entering into world of internet of things virtual reality augmented reality you at at the present time you may have seen that we have got the artificial intelligence generative ai we are also trying to have various simulations like suppose if we are going to uh, make some model plan for a city if we are trying to generate a model traffic plan for some city for that purposes we are going to need some simulations and this is something which can be achieved with the help of quantum technology okay it can it can be used to even like uh, if we are talking about the subatomic particles their behavior and all these things can be done but in the day to day life it can be used for simulations of real life problems as well okay so that is again the use of quantum technology okay now quantum metrology basically this quantum technology has also applications in navigation communication astronomy weather forecasting early warning systems in all these applications in all these sectors there can be used of quantum computing again okay then if we talk about quantum optics now this is also very important because it can be used to develop new types of lasers it can be used to develop new types of lasers sensors imaging systems okay you know that right now we are having so many earth observation satellites performing a wide range of function for that now think about what if we use quantum technology in there what we are use what if we are using quantum optics in there so that is also something which can enhance the our our the view of our earth observation satellites okay so this is again the use of quantum technology it can provide us high sensitivity high sensitivity and ultra precision so that is also some use of quantum technology okay then if we talk about india and quantum computing do we have any indigenously developed quantum computer at the present time 
the answer is no we are still in developing phase okay so basically the government has come up with one new mission in this year in 2023 itself in april month we have got the national quantum mission okay and it has been launched for a period of 8 years by the department of science and technology of the government of india so from the period of 2023 to 2031 this will be operational and what is the main aim here or it's one of the very important aim is we are going to develop intermediate scale quantum computers having 52000 physical qubits in the next 8 years okay so we are going to develop new quantum computers in india having these capacity of around 52000 qubits okay so this is what we are going to do in upcoming 8 years so in very soon you will find that we are having some indigenously developed quantum computers in india okay so this is our quantum mission national quantum mission and you might see that there is focus on other dimensions also like there is focus on development of the devices or the hardware parts which are required for proper application of quantum technology we are also discussing about development of sensors and related things okay so do read about this national quantum mission okay so thank you for watching this video do like the video and share it with your friends and you can see the previous video of science and tech in this playlist as well thank you very much all the best